So let's start going through the third rules. The first of which, of which, is this one: third rules. Um, square root of a times square root of a is the same as saying the square root of a squared. Um, because if you time something by itself, you're squaring it. Now we know when you square root something and square it, they're doing the opposite. It's like um, if you divide by 5 and then times it by 5, you're doing the opposite. And when you do the opposite, you're basically you're undoing what you did a minute ago. So if you square root something and then you square it, that means you're undoing the square root. Uh, and then you get back to where you started, which is A. Let's give you an example of that. Say you did the square root of 9, and then you square it. What will you get? Well, the square root of 9, uh, one answer is 3. And if you square 3, you get 9 again. So it definitely works. Being, and it makes sense because you're just doing the opposite. Uh, here's another example of the same thing. So square root of 5 times square root of 5 uh, is equal to 5. And how do we get to that using the same trick here? So square root of 5 times square root of 5 is the same as saying square root of 5 squared. And as we said before, square rooting and squaring are opposites, so the squaring gets rid of this square root, and you're left with 5. Now, in this example, I purposely chose a number which you could square root and know the answer easily, which is the square root of 9 is 3. But over here, we don't know exactly what the square root of 5 is. It, the answer goes on for an infinite number of decimal places. It just goes on and on and on without any predictable number. Um, so square root of 5, we don't really know, but what we do know is if you square the square root, you get rid of it. So even though we don't know what the square root of 5 is, we can still work out what square root of 5 times square root of 5 is. It's going to be 5.